bone it, bang 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 it, probably one of the most important things in music history um it's not beethoven it's not bach it's not uh queen or anything like that it's the notorious big notorious those were some good name drops though by the way yeah those are about the only like three musicians i can think of other than notorious big obviously uh, I mean, but I'm, he's, he is the man yeah i'm fired up for this one um it when I when I brought it to you, I needed to know. I asked the question, you know, Big Ear Pac to you, and that answer kind of fueled which direction we were going to go. Because if you said Tupac, then it was going to have to be all right. I'm going to have to sit here defending Notorious uh-huh. B.I.G. to you for an hour. But now that you answered the correct answer, which is Notorious <laughs> B.I.G., uh, we can just talk about him the whole time, and we can only touch on Tupac. Which hey, is we'll, nice. we'll touch a little on Tupac. I mean, we got to give the man some credit. Their their lives were very intertwined, so you know we oh, gotta, you can't talk about one without touching on the other. Absolutely, we're gonna start with the the biggest battle of all time, and that's Biggie versus Tupac, because that's the most important Tupac. thing when you're talking about these two. And you know, like I said, we're both on the Biggie side of this. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a Twitter poll earlier. I got to check on the results of that. I just actually checked a few minutes ago, and Pac oh, has pulled man. ahead at fifty nine percent. Yeah, it's sixty forty now. Oh man, Biggie, Biggie was off to an early lead, but uh, Tupac edged him out towards the end here. And we'll read some <laughs> comments later, uh, but we want to talk about our thoughts first. Absolutely. What? All right. So, give me a rundown of why you think Notorious B.I.G. is better. I mean, it's the right answer. So you're not convincing me. You're convincing the listeners and all these people on Twitter who voted for Tupac. Uh, why? Why was Biggie better? I think. Biggie was more of a natural, just uh, rapper. Like that, that's that's kind of how I feel. I mean, I'll say this about Pac: dude was a Renaissance man, but Biggie just has that boisterous flow. Juilliard He's, trained Tupac was. Yeah, I mean he he was an actor and he did all this crazy stuff. Whereas it feels like feels like Biggie was born to rap, to have a brilliant flash in the pan and then disappear, kind of like Hendrix. He has mm-hmm. that that really you know, funky can get you down, you know, or you can get down to, and, uh, you know, he, he has music that covers all ranges of the emotion. So like if you're feeling pissed off and you're trying to rage out or you're at the gym, he's got songs that pump you up. You're trying to party. He's got songs that bring you down. You know, you can have a good time. He's that dude. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And like you said, Tupac had so much going on, it seemed like. He, he yeah. rapped. Rapping was like his third thing. Because like I said, he went to Juilliard. I believe that was for dancing. Mm-hmm. Um, and really. he was an actor, uh, which, I mean, he was, probably, in my mind, a better actor than he was a rapper. Um, He's but and good. A, a lot of his songs came from poetry. He was a great poet. Exactly. And then... Um, he was an activist as well. His Ooh. both his parents were in the Black Panther, so I mean that brought a lot onto him, um, and he tried to to fight for those things as well. Um, I agree with you though. Biggie is the better. The if we're just talking rapper, that it's it's big all day. Uh, uh, yep. And I've been making this argument for years, probably since I saw the movie Notorious, which we're going to get into Notorious a little bit later. Oh. Um, but I I didn't grow up with listening to notorious big or tupac i mean i was around in the 90s but i didn't listen to much i heard some of his things that would like get played at the roller rink (laughs) or like on pop radio but like i wasn't going deep cuts like 10 crack commandments was not something i heard when i was you know 10 years old but i had heard hypnotize and his verse on mo money mo problems things like Mm -hmm. that well yeah i mean those were some of his hits that Mm. uh but I think Biggie really commercial. shined. Exactly, you know, radio play. But I think mm. Biggie really shined on his his deeper stuff. You know that you have to search a little bit to get to. Yeah, absolutely. He was he was a lyricist above all else, and he was a lyricist and a gangster rapper, which is not something you, you're either one or the other usually. And, yeah, exactly. Um, and Tupac was kind of in that same boat. Um, the the way I feel about it, if you're going Biggie versus Tupac, you have with with Biggie, you have 
two and like a half full album. You have two full like studio albums um, with Ready to Die and Life After Death. And then he did um, the Born Again or I, Puff Daddy put it together after he was dead, um, which is just like a bunch of verses that he had recorded that weren't actually on songs yet. And they threw other features on him to make them full length songs, basically. And then they had um, in 2005, they released the duets mixtape where they took old Biggie yeah. verses and threw them on with new rappers, basically. But so you you only have basically those two albums for his entire life. Um, mm-hmm. In my mind, every song on those two albums is good. Damn near every song yeah. I can get down to on any given day. If it, when you get into Born Again, there's some some sloppy ones just because the way they have to put things together and the features aren't aren't, aren't always great things like that. Mm-hmm. But then when you compare it to Tupac, is like there are a million Tupac songs or different versions of Tupac songs, and it's like it's it's just way too much. So he has he has some really good stuff, but he also has a lot of really bad stuff because he just kept making music and music and making music and making music and making music. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to compare it to how Lil Wayne and Eminem are kind of for the last now? five years. Yeah. yeah. Oh God, they're terrible now. But they, they just keep putting awesome. shit out. <laughs> yeah. If if you would have stopped Lil Wayne at the Carter Three and stopped Eminem at the Eminem show, like that, that's done. Oh yeah, they'll they're, go they're down perfect as at that point. Some of the best rappers that ever which, lived, and they still will. But which sadly happened to Notorious B.I.G. I think if he lives mm-hmm. longer. And he puts out more albums, you get into this territory. Same thing with Tupac. If he gets to put in, he's not maybe considered, or, or people like at the, if, if Tupac and Biggie live, then you have more of an argument with Jay Z, Lil Wayne, and Eminem, and Nas saying they're the greatest. But right now yeah. it's like Tupac and Biggie are at the top. And then this next tier of Jay Z, Nas, Eminem are a rung lower. Well, I mean, Biggie and Pac even for the brief period of time that they, they created and got stuff out there, they paved the way for those guys. Like, they did things that had never been done, like just the sales and the obscurity that they came from. I mean, when you talk about gangster rap, Biggie, I feel like he was going to do two things in life. He was either going to rap or sell drugs, both of which he was really good at, and luckily he got discovered and could rap, whereas Pac could be anything he 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 really wanted right so yeah rapping was the side thing to make even more money than he was making ex- through movies exactly. and dancing and all this yeah gobs of money yeah I, I i can't imagine and just being tupac was literally a genius in any way you slice it he was a genius he like, was so Biggie, creative i don't know that overall you could say he's a genius lyrically he is but from a, a standpoint of as a person, was he? I don't think so. Uh, but Tupac was that. And it, it's kind of for both of them, it's sad how they wound up because, you know, they got involved with people like Puff Daddy and Suge Knight, who aren't the most stable people. And they end up not here and able to continue their genius. I mean, I, yeah, that's that's the sad thing. Like what Suge Knight got arrested not too long ago for for running some dude over with his car. And it's just yeah, Suge Knight's a bad dude. He, he's super. He's a nasty cat. But you know, like you said, it sucks that we have him instead of Pac. Never really mm-hmm. liked Pac. Like you, you said, you didn't grow up with him. I, I did. So I, I'm a little bit younger than you. So I mean, I was like three when they were getting really big, or mm-hmm. when they died. I want to say. Well, so Pac died in '96, and Biggie died in '97. I think. Yep. So I was three and four. Yeah. But I remember growing up, my mom... Uh, I, mean, I was, was 10 then, and it was just not on my radar, because as a 10-year-old, that's... As a 10-year-old thank, thank white God. kid in northern Florida, that's not what's on your radar. <laughs> yeah, most of, and, and I think that's a good thing not to have on your radar if you're 10 anywhere, <laughs> especially, you know... Hopefully. I don't know why my mom played it for me. I'm kind of glad she did, but it was like breakfast table. We'd always listen to music. It was like Beastie mm. Boys, Eminem, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Biggie... Pac and Snoop Dogg. No so, Wu Tang in there. Uh, I've been playing Wu Tang for my daughter since she was like six months old. She used to love it. She she throw up the W and everything. That's dude. That is so amazing. <laughs> she I don't let her listen to it anymore. But like in six more years, she'll be able to again. Like I don't think. I think if it's presented in a way like, all right, this isn't what is right but it's music and it's fun to listen to like that and and it's just you know you can dance to it you can bob your head whatever Mm. and and it is the rapping can be an art form rapping can be super dumb at shout out mumble rappers you you guys Um, suck but it can also be this awesome 
art form and poetry like these guys were making like yeah and, and it, it's something you can learn it keeps your brain sharp like mm-hmm. i remember when i was in middle school and high school and i started listening to rap eminem was one of my favorites and it wasn't it wasn't because he was white like me it was because i mean that was part of it but it's also like he was the one doing it fastest and i wanted to try and keep up with him i wanted to learn all the words and be able to to keep up with him while he's going and i could with some songs um so like I, that shit. yeah I, it it fuels creativity it fuels um just keeping your brain quick things like that so like i don't necessarily think it's bad as long as you learn that what they're singing is not real life exactly and i i love that eminem came out and says that like i mean he trolls people but um you know i they in the end created something beautiful and Mm -hmm. evidenced by the fact it's lasting like people wear them on their shirts they have them on their wall they talk about them like we are now in luke cage they've got that notorious big poster like in uh shit what's his name the villain from the first season cottonmouth Cottonmouth in in his office, like there's that big notorious B.I.G. with the crown mm-hmm. on poster. I really want one of those posters. My wife won't let me get one. What? She's like, he's a drug dealer. You want that in your house? <laughs> I was like, I, it looks cool though. It's like, honey, he. <laughs> you want your kids to ask you about that? I was like, I don't really care. I'll just. He's a. It, it's a cool looking picture. Exactly. He's a big giant teddy bear. Um, they don't need to know what crack is. <laughs> he's like. in the he's in the Kooji sweater and everything. It's a it's a dope poster. So anybody listening wants to get me a birthday present. I'll, I'll take that. It doesn't even have to be a real one. It can be a print. I'm good with it. Send it to me. You hear that, guys? I mean, he's even helping you out. That's an easy one. Boom. Yeah. Gave you exactly. Watch, go watch Luke Cage. Great show anyways. Get that picture for me. Send it to me. Uh, but just a quick tangent. After We already tangented on that. I wanted to tangent on Eminem real quick. Sure. Have you seen these um, Chris Delia little things he does where he's pretending to be Eminem? He's like walking around his garage and like doing like the really horse mouth uh rapping i have not seen it um but i've heard that he has done it oh it's hilarious it's because it's it's um late stage eminem that he's emulating Mm -hmm. so it's just a the i i can't do it but like the really raspy voice and the very short lines that and like these big breaths in between it's listeners and you youtube it after this chris delia eminem impression it's hilarious check that out it's really good Chris Delia is a pretty funny dude. Yeah, he is. Shout out Chris Delia. <laughs> if you're listening. Uh, but anyway, back to, I kind of lost where we were on Biggie versus Pac. I know we were at Biggie is better. We um, were talking about their musical style comparisons. One of, one of the things that Pac did was he was he was a little more quick-witted, I would say, than um, Biggie. Now, Biggie was good at freestyling, but like, I don't know if quick-witted is the right word, but he was faster. <laughs> Kind of like I was talking about Eminem, yeah. like Twista, people like Twista. that, where they they can get the lines out really fast without stumbling. Mm. I, Biggie wasn't right. Biggie was very methodical, and you could really hear each word yeah. in line. And um, but I, as far as styles goes, I there's there's room for both of them. I just feel like um, so there's this quote in the movie Notorious, which I just watched, um, that they say, "Ask ten different people who Pac was, and you get ten different answers." And I feel like it not only was that true in his life, but you can kind of feel that in his music. You know that there he you can listen to ten different Tupac songs and all of them can be completely sound exactly. different. He's just a he's one of those guys, which I guess is good. But the problem is like because it's good to have variety when you're listening Absolutely. to music. Nobody wants to listen to the same thing over and over and over again. Um, but the problem with that is on on one end of that spectrum is really really good, and on the other end of the spectrum is really fucking trash. Terrible. He put yeah. out some trash and. and I, I just don't feel like any big song hits that fucking terrible end of the spectrum ever. No, and I don't think he was willing to create that kind of crap. Like, I'm guessing he just trashed it, and what he did record, he was going to turn into some good music. But Yeah. Well, sorry, go ahead. And I think it helps having... Oh, no problem. Um, I think it helps having Puff Daddy... One thing Puff Daddy was good at was producing music and finding the right beats. Mm-hmm. There, there's a scene in Notorious where he um, throws on the Juicy Fruit song that that they eventually made into they sampled to make juicy his first single and like everybody's looking at him like he's an idiot but this song is huge once it comes Mm -hmm. out and um like he he, yeah it's still very good um he he, puff daddy was very very good at even though he's a crazy person and most likely a murderer or or an accessory to murder 
he was very good at finding ways to produce good music. Absolutely, he's ca- it's a terrible he's, rapper. Oh, dude, he's a terrible musician. But he's got he's very talented. He's like Dr. Dre. He's got a he's, good ear. He's yeah. got a great ear. He's very creative for that type of platform. Mm-hmm. And if he can have someone to hold in the limelight, but be in the background and be like, "Yeah, I'm helping this guy succeed," kind of like Dre did for Eminem and Fifty Cent, then. You know, I think that's his position, but he made some damn good music with Biggie. And well, and even his songs alone would be good if he wasn't such a terrible rapper. He, yeah. I, 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 I can't take him seriously ever since I saw uh, Dave tough. Chappelle's impersonation of him on the Chappelle show. <laughs> I need some Cambodian breast milk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, I'll give you that. Um, and and just. So the the thing with Puff Daddy is, he he knew how to make hit makers. Mm-hmm. He he had Notorious B.I.G. and then I, even Craig Mack had his his day in the limelight. Buster Rhymes was on Bad Boy early. Jada Kiss was on Bad Boy. Um, Put little Kim on there. Case, little Little Kim was, but that was the, or at least from what the movie Notorious tells us, that was more big kind of bringing her along. Mm-hmm. Um, he had Joe to see your. Casey and JoJo, if you will. Um, they had uh, Faith Evans, who was very good. They had 112, who was very good. He had Mace, who was supposed to be the successor to Notorious B.I.G. and then decided to go back to church, and we never got the real Mace back, and I'm I'm sad for that. I love Mace. <laughs> You're not a Mace fan? Uh, no, I was just... I think it's funny. He decided to go back to church. <laughs> he, that's what he did. He left, went to church. Yeah. Never came back. Didn't. Signed with G Unit for a while. That didn't hit. Signed with uh, Maybach Music for a while with Rick Ross. That oh, didn't work. Maybach Music. I think he's out of the game. I hope he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Mace. Best, best I love of luck, you. Mace. Yeah, we we'd love to have you on the show if you're not busy. I know you're not busy because you're not making music. So. <laughs> give, give us a call. You know, he's sitting there like, oh. I'm all right. I'm, all right, I'll come on there. Just to talk some shit. <laughs> As far as Death Row goes, I mean, you had Tupac, and you had, I guess you had Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg, but then (laughs) Dr. Dre left, and Snoop Dogg, like, for all of his, what he is, I don't think he's that good. His his first couple albums were, yeah. Yeah, he was really good when he was young. His first couple albums were pretty damn good, but I think... He probably suffered from success a little bit, too. eh, That success, excess, um, Mm -hmm. and I just, I, I think... People only have a certain amount of creativity, and I think he kind of maxed his out pretty early, and he's been coasting on that persona he developed ever since. Well, and the, the other problem with this is once he gets super rich, it's hard to sing about being on the streets anymore. Yeah, and slinging crack. Or, or, anything, that, or anything that people feel but is I mean, real. shit, he, he beat um, a murder rap, too. Oh, yeah. You see this a lot with basically almost every band. They're, if they're first, they'll have one big album. You know, like their first hit album and then they kind of start going south once everybody finds them they start going south because they've had all this success or they've like you said they've used all that creativity you put you know 15 years into putting your first album out and then you got to do your next one in less than a year otherwise you know your label is going to get mad or producers are going to get mad whatever and they they just can't do it no and you, you can't force creativity they can't do it at the same level at least well it's i'm sure it's tough to be like on the road touring and trying to come up with new mm-hmm. music new especially music, if yeah. you're not feeling it like i get hit with creativity bouts all the time and i got to drop what i'm doing and and go like when i'm feeling it otherwise it's like trying to pull teeth right cuz you're not going to if if you try and sit down right all right i'm going to write every day at 9 like if you're not feeling it that day, you're just not feeling it. And you're not going to, you're going to sit there and scan the internet instead. And then you just wasted an hour rather than when you feel that buzz of creativity, you mm-hmm. go like, you can't be forced into creativity. And that's, you know, you see that a lot. You go back to Eminem, like his first album was pretty much trash, but then his next two were so his, good. Probably his best two. And the, after that, it was a slow decline. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Eminem show was still, you know, a, one of my favorite albums ever, but it, is not as good as Marshall Mathers LP and Slim Shady you know, LP. or the or the Slim Shady LP. No, so it's better than Infinite, Infinite. though. So we can we can all get that out there. <laughs> uh, but then after that, it just goes down and down, and because they had once once you hit it this big, everybody's expecting so much from you, and you just can't keep up. Like there's no way to yeah. keep up. And you know that he was pounding drugs 
big time, and a lot of those yeah. musicians are are hitting some drugs hardcore. Well, they have to, just like you said, the lifestyle of being on the road and, you know, trying to be yeah, crazy. You man. have to try and Jesus. get your career. Somebody like Snoop Dogg, who probably wrote his best music when he was high in his early days, because he was probably always high in his early days. Oh, he's still um, not, tr- high. not trying to slander. Yeah, I'm not trying to slander Snoop Dogg here. I don't think that's a secret. So, like, then you try and keep that going as much as mm-hmm. you can. You ride the wave. Eminem, you know, he did the Eminem show mostly on painkillers. That's one of his best albums, one of his top selling albums. So he thinks to get back to that, I got to do my painkillers again. And that doesn't work. I mean, he was in the bouts of addiction. And when you're dealing with stuff Mm -hmm. like that, it's hard to know who you are without that substance. So I think a lot of those musicians also lose that edge, too. Or they end up dying. Like, I mean, you see Kurt Cobain, Amy Winehouse, Jimi Hendrix, like they all died. And they all had some, really some great creativity left over, I'm sure. But damn it, them mm. drugs took them too soon. Well, yeah, there's always still moments of, of great creativity in these guys. Like Eminem still has great lines, even on his last album, which wasn't very good. There's still some really good lines in there that you're like, okay, he obviously had that line, knew it was good, but then had to build a whole song around it. And the whole song is trash, but that line was good. Yeah. Um, so you see that still, and, and you just never got to that point with Biggie cause he died so early. Um, so that's, that's my thought is I, I, Tupac's best song, which I would say is probably either hit him up or hail Mary mm-hmm. is better than Biggie's best song. But if you're taking an average of all of their songs, Biggie's average is higher. I'm a dis- if that makes I'm sense. I'm a disagree with you on that. Yes. I think it, and I'm personally biased as, as is everybody cause they all have their favorite songs, but. My favorite Pac song, which you said it, and we'll talk about it later, doesn't even come close to my favorite Biggie song. You don't think Hit 'em Up's better than any Biggie song? Mm, I mean, it's better than some, but not well yeah. better than you know <laughs> better than the top Biggie song. The okay. top Biggie song in my mind, in your mind, right? Okay, I I could buy that too. I I would actually, if if forced, I'd probably agree. Like, I would rather listen to any of my top three that we're going to talk about than hit them up, but hit them up bangs. Yeah, it does. (laughs) I mean, they both, dude, they both had some bangers. I remember back in high school, had, uh, you know, subwoofers in my little car, and it would just destroy my rattle to no end. Nice. (sighs) Yep. I wish, so that was, I, I remember that there was this East Coast, West Coast thing when I was, you know... In elementary school, towards the end of elementary school, I remember it was, oh, East Coast, West Coast, Biggie versus Tupac. But I didn't know, like, I the only music I had heard was Notorious B.I.G. Tupac didn't get on the radio where I lived at mm-hmm. all um, because he didn't have that many, like, clean singles that could get radio play. And at that time, so it's like, okay, this is who I hear. This is who I like. And then that kind of snowballed later yeah. on. I just, I, I totally understand. I mean, that's completely understandable. I, uh, luckily I was exposed early and I can say that my mother did play a lot more Biggie than Pac. And you were on the West coast or at least from, um, from California, six, six, nine. We did have a lot of, um, feedback on our poll that we did on Twitter about, you know, who was better. The, the poll was who was better. That was the only thing asked and it was Tupac or Notorious, Notorious B.I.G. You as, uh, tweeters could, you know. Figure that out however you want it. Uh, our first comment comes from the No Context podcast, and it, you know he addresses that right away. Who is better at what? They have different styles, like we've talked about. Um, they both rap, but Biggie can't be beat with his flow and wordplay to fit the flow, and Tupac can't be beat with his lyrics. Just clever, not just clever lines, but full songs written as if it was poetry. Which I, I think we covered. That. Yeah, he would, uh, Tupac was a poet, but Biggie's still better. You, you didn't answer the question in the context podcast. You didn't answer. You you, you said it was both of them. Uh, you just, I'm sure you voted, but we can't tell who voted for what. Yeah. So, uh, The Anxenity podcast, uh, he says, I grew up listening to both, but for me, Tupac was a great lyricist. They both had great flow, but Tupac was a poet to me and to others. He actually has a poetry book out with his lyrics. I found it at Books A Million in the poetry section. Go to Books a Million, check out their poetry section, find some Tupac. Which I I actually did not know he had a published book, so thank you um, for letting me like know that. I feel like you did. I feel like I knew that. Like, that's one of those things that, like, you heard one time and just like, all right, that's kind of cool. But then I moved on with my life, but <laughs> yeah, I might check that out. Um, Anxiety, he, he looks like he's going for Tupac for the most part. Uh, Talks with Missy B. London podcast. 
this is a hard one? Like, that's not an answer, man. Yeah, come on. That's not an answer. We need Missy Missy B. London. We need a better answer than this is a hard one. Yeah, it's we know it's a hard one. That's why we asked it, bruh. Yeah. Uh, and then we got the podcast junkie saying West Coast is the best coast. Everyone knows that. So that sounds like another vote for Tupac, which I don't know. Some guy from the You Are All Alone podcast says so he's repping the six six nine six six nine with a with a uh, weird arm there, disembodied arm. I don't know what that's all. That's about. That's me flexing on you, dog. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Even though you just talked at length about how the East Coast rapper is better. Yes, I did. So gonna, yes, I we're did. We're gonna mark that up for the uh, the two one three there. I'm a bastard. I don't think it's the 213. I think that's in Massachusetts somewhere, or Connecticut. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, all you Connecticuters, for thinking you're from New York. So let's talk about these movies. Notorious, as I've name-dropped several times already, and uh, the Tupac movie, Notorious was from 2009. The Tupac movie, All Eyes on Me, came out, I want to say, 2017 or 2018. It's very recent. Uh, have you seen both of these movies? I've seen Notorious a couple times, but it's been a while since I've rewatched it, and I have not seen All Eyes on Me. I've seen previews and like clips on YouTube, because I was really curious when I first heard about I'm gonna it. I'm going to go ahead and save you some time. It's fucking terrible. I heard it was just absolutely garbage. It's one of the worst movies I've seen, and I've seen some really bad movies. Um, it's, it's uncoordinated, it's disjointed, and it's just boring. I don't know how they can take such an interesting person like Tupac and his family, like they bring in his parents and everything, Black Panther Party, all that. And, you know, just from his roots to his death to his music, and they just make a two hour bland, uh, disjointed film about like, I, I couldn't even tell you wow. if I didn't know anything about Tupac. I would have no idea what his life story is from that movie. That's terrible, man. How you got to try really fucking hard to to do that, dude. To to make his life boring. You could have made a good movie if you just read Wikipedia about Tupac. I swear, man. That's terrible. Well, so uh, here's part of the problem. The good Tupac movie already exists inside of Notorious. Anthony Mackie was a great Tupac. Uh -huh. They should have just kept him and I all eyes on me first of all. Um, like he gets the spastic energy of Tupac perfectly right of where he's, you know, just calm and chill one minute. And then all of a sudden he's going crazy on everybody. It it really sums up the, you ask 10 different people, they give you 10 different answers. Mm. But I, I just love Notorious. It's out of all the rap movies that are made. It's probably top two. I don't know if straight out of Compton beat it out, but it's, it's up there with that. Eight mile. I like eight mile. It's pretty good. But I like Notorious. I like Notorious and straight out of Compton better because they're, truer yeah they're they're told as a true story rather than this is basically a true story but we're going to substitute in characters so we can mm -hmm. lie about it a little we'll bit fictionalize this it's mm -hmm. I, I really the only time see when i watched notorious i went into it optimistic because i figured it would be a bad movie but after seeing you know previews and stuff you're like okay that dude looks kind of talks like notorious i mean he's pretty he close all of the casting in this movie is perfect oh yeah and it, it's just a it's a good movie like you're mm -hmm. it's a really good movie you're invested they tell you a ton of stuff yeah they change a, a bit um, <laughs> yeah they do <laughs> but either way you're still like okay this is biggie this is dope the only time whereas it sounds like all eyes on me was a cringe fest the only time i cringed was at the very end of the movie when the uh they start what is it hypnotize on the boom box oh man that's my favorite i was just gonna say that part almost made me cry when they play hypnotize when the funeral procession's going through yeah i that gives me chills when they do that um i guess i'm just like <laughs> i guess i'm you, fucked have up have you no soul apparently apparently not man i'm evil and angela bassett's there talking about how they she heard her son <laughs> as she's driving home from the funeral Oh, man. I mean, totally touching, but I just, when people are just, like, dancing at a funeral, or, well, I well, guess it wasn't, it wasn't at the funeral. Yeah, they, she was, like, driving back home from the funeral, and everybody's out in the streets. And, they, yeah, they start playing a song. I love that part. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm, I guess I'm just an <laughs> so, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you say they um, they fudge some of the details. You know, they, they really made it. They built him up to be like this great dude that just hit some hard luck. You know, he went to jail, mm -hmm. and he got caught with guns, things like that. But really, he's a good dude. But really, at the same time, they show him basically almost beating Faith Evans and Little Kim. 
Um, and it's like, so I, I know he's not really a great dude, but the way they made the movie, you, you overlooked all of that and were like, he, he did come in a bad place. He was trying to make it. He, he seemed like he was trying to be a better person. Um, I, he didn't get a chance to prove that he could be ever like he was young doing young, stupid things yeah. that people who have money when they're young and stupid do. I'm not saying it, like that's an excuse for hitting women or dealing drugs or anything like that. But when you're young, you make stupid decisions. And as you grow and he had, you know, kids and everything, it, the movie showed him as starting to realize he needs to change his life. And he never got that opportunity, which to me is tragic. Yeah. It, it, I need to get out the rap game. It's like, I don't think he ever said that. And when, I feel like the movie almost tried to make him like an, an anti-hero. Whereas yeah, a little bit. I, I think in real life, like I said, man, he was either going to be a rapper or a drug dealer. Like those were the two things that specific person was born to do, I feel like. And mm. he was a damn good drug dealer. He talked about it a lot. <laughs> Evidence, you know, is He's everywhere. He's got 10 crack commandments out there. And um, come on. Anybody who makes up commandments for your, your uh, slang and weight job. <laughs> You gotta know what you're doing. And gets paid to do it and doesn't get arrested by the government. I mean, that's pretty ballsy. <laughs> and, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I think he did the best he could with what he had. But at the same time, that doesn't make it right. Um, no. But honestly, if that was, this is, I can say this because I'm not in that spectrum and, you know, this is a huge if. But if that was the best way to support my family. Like, if that's how I had to make it, I'd do that shit too, man. I'd do what I have to. Well, and that's kind of what, that's how the movie portrayed him. I like, I'm, I'm going mostly off the movie and things I've read, because, like, obviously he's not around and we can't see how anything turned out or I can't ask him. But, like, it, it showed the first time he got out of jail, he was like, oh, shit, I've got a daughter now. I need to make money. The fastest way to do that is what I've al- already been doing to make money. Mm-hmm. And then, like, he didn't graduate high school. He's, you know, a convicted felon at this point. <laughs> He's not going to go get a job. No. And at, that's especially the best thing you can do. And, and then, you know, and then they gave his tape to Puff Daddy and it kind of snowballed from there into this. And Puff Daddy basically, and this is where the, I think a lot of the biggest fudging of details comes is anything having to do with Puff Daddy in this movie to make him look like this perfect altruistic person. Yeah. Um, because Puff Daddy had a huge influence on the movie. Him and Faith Evans both had a huge influence on the movie um, and and going into making it. So, like, he he's really not as great as this movie makes him out to be. But he did, like, kind of push him in the right direction of you need to get out of dealing drugs if, if you're going to do this. Mm-hmm. Because if you're going to do this and make money, you can't be in jail. No, absolutely. I mean, it's not like you gain credibility from going to jail. I mean, ask, like, Gucci. Gucci Mane went mm-hmm. to jail, like, 35 times. <laughs> like, and where's he at? Nowhere. But he also came out with 62 albums. Um, yeah, and I mean, but even if you look at T.I. and Lil Wayne, after they came out of jail, their yeah, albums true. went downhill. Um, but I think that's kind of the same thing we already talked about, is you eventually just run out of creativity. Yeah. Even though I, you got a lot of time to be creative in jail, I feel like, and you should probably be writing some things down. Hopefully. We talked a little bit about the casting. Anthony Mackie's Tupac was perfect. Um, we talked about the guy playing uh, Grown Up, Notorious B.I.G., B. I. G., uh, Jamal Woolard. Uh, the, the cool thing that he did was he got his breathing down. Yeah. Of just <laughs> yeah. like how when he's walking around, he has these like heavy breaths mm-hmm. in between each word. And when he's rapping, you can hear that too. And uh, so that was really cool how they captured that with, you know, he, he's probably only got like interviews and stuff to go on to see him and what Puff Daddy's telling him in real life of how he walked and talked. And I, I feel like I, I feel like I was watching the person. Um, Derek Luke as Puff Daddy was perfect. He just ball of energy, basically. Um, like I said, though, they uh, weren't probably portraying Puffy as the uh, the real Puffy. He's kind of a piece of shit mm-hmm. and uh, throws weights at coaches and throws bitch fits if his uh kid doesn't get to play on the ucla football team things like that um yeah it, it did he's he's not a good person yeah fuck did he probably pro- probably has his hand in some murders as well oh yeah i mean he didn't he 
We'll we'll talk about this later. Actually, I'm yeah, gonna... he's he's linked to some very high profile mm-hmm. murders, but he's also linked to lower profile murders as well. He's he's not a good dude. No, he's, um, he's I think you summed it up well. He's a piece of shit. Yeah, uh, they had Natori Naughton who uh, was playing Lil Kim, which she hasn't. She's in Power now on Showtime or Stars. I don't watch that show, but I've heard it's really good. Fifty Cent's in it. Turtle from Entourage is in it. I've heard it's really good. Huh. Uh, but she was good at Lil Kim. Um, my wife walked in about halfway through, and I was watching Notorious today. And she goes, wow, she really sounds like Lil' Kim. And I was like, well, I think they probably just dubbed Lil' Kim over her, um, like, for the singing performances. But I, I think she could pull it off. She was actually in a, like, girl rap R&B group in the early 2000s called 3LW. 3- do you remember them? I do not remember them. Baby, I'm a Do-Right, I think, was their uh, their popular song. They weren't very good. I'm sure I heard that at some point. <laughs> uh, yeah, it yeah, it's, it's not good. Uh, but she did a great job as little Kim, Angela Bassett as Biggie's mom, a uh, girl playing Faith Evans. Her name is Antonique Smith. I haven't really seen her in anything else, but she did a great job in this. Again, Faith Evans was like on set. Her and, her and Puff Daddy were like on set, really had their hands in producing this movie and pointing everyone in the, the maybe not the right direction, but the direction they wanted to show. It and brought some validity. Yeah. And then uh, middle school Biggie is played by... Notorious P.I.G.'s actual son from Faith Evans, Chris Wallace Jr. What a, so fun. a fun fact. Straight up baller. Who never really got to meet his father. And he's actually uh-huh. in, he's he's actually a solid actor. He's in at least one other movie. Um, movie with Will Ferrell from like 2010, 2011 called Everything Must Go. It was an indie movie. It was pretty good. Huh. He like gets kicked out of his house. Will Ferrell gets kicked out of his house, and like his wife throws all his shit on the lawn. So he just sits out there and has a garage sale for like three days. And uh, Christopher Wallace Jr. is like this kid that lives in the neighborhood and comes by and talks to him all day. Pretty good movie. Check it out. I'll have to do that. But yeah, that those, those are my thoughts on Notorious. Like I told you before we start recording, I probably have more thoughts on this than anyone's ever thought because this movie, like critically, it didn't do well or anything. And I think it kind of just came and went. I don't ever hear anyone talk about it. Uh, but I really like it, and I really like Notorious B.I.G. Uh, after I watched this movie, the way they used the soundtrack, like it was all Notorious B.I.G. songs, obviously, but the way they put them in the movie, it all made perfect sense. And like as soon as it was done, I went and downloaded Life After Death and Ready to Die and made sure I listened to every song and basically listened to them nonstop for a few weeks. Because that's how much this movie was like, okay, I, I didn't realize that he was this good before I watched this movie. Yeah, he, uh, that really cemented Like that all of his me. music was that good. Oh, yeah, man. He was just, he was a bad motherfucker. That was, that, that's about the best way I could say it. That dude could rap. I would, I would go to say that I had never heard Juicy before this movie came out. What? So, yeah, like, so before this movie came out, I had probably heard Mo Money, Mo Problems, uh, All About the Benjamins hypnotize big papa uh, i'm guessing big papa. big papa yeah big papa i only heard from hardball, uh, hardball but that i listened to the real song but um let me see what else that i heard notorious thugs and going back to cali those are probably the only ones and then i had heard everything that was on the the biggie duets uh mixtape that they made in 2005 which are only short verses of everything. So I hadn't heard a whole lot of Biggie music at that time. And then I watched this movie and heard all of the different songs that were in there. And I was like, I've never heard any of these. So I need to listen to more. And then I just like fell in love and couldn't stop listening. He's a, he's one of those guys you dive in. I remember when I got my car, like my first car and I put in my sub. What kind of car was it? A 1999 Nissan Maxima manual. Nice. And I... Nice hated that car <laughs> god i hated that car but i, I had, had a, a 2004 system. honda civic that we're going to talk more about when we do our fast and furious movies Ooh, buddy yeah my car was neither fast nor furious um yeah, it was mine but i remember uh my buddy gage he was a he thought he was a dj Shout out gage. gage what up man but he uh he had that cd and I used to give him a ride to school every day, so we would just mm. jam out before school every day to some Biggie, and we did that for like I don't know four months, and then I you know put something else in. But that was when I, I was more uh, into Nelly during those times. Nelly, oh man, I was a little younger during the Nelly craze. I remember, yeah, my, you're lucky. My sister was she's four years older than me, five years older than me. I want to say she's. I think she's. 
you, I think she she's your age. The answer to that. Oh my god, she uh, she was obsessed with Nelly. I remember there was like nine posters all over her room. I I will admit, in high school, I had terrible taste in rap music. Every I high schooler does. Chingy, I was listening to Nelly. I was listening to. I mean, I had some good things. I had Eminem and Ti, but like mostly, I'd want to listen to Chingy and Nelly, which I mean, doesn't look great nowadays, but that's okay. <laughs> it's not very ludicrous. Lasting. Ludacris was good back then. Yeah, he was. See, I, I was listening to like Eminem, Lil Wayne a ton. Uh, I had no Lil Wayne in high school. I remember when Drake first came out, like his first couple albums, dude, where he actually Damn, raps. So I'll be 26 in a couple was, of weeks. Shout out. I was graduated college when Drake's first mixtape came out. I was in I was in high school. I don't yeah. even. All right, let's talk top three songs from Notorious B.I.G. Three to one. Three You go to your one. number three first. My number three is Who Shot Ya from the album Ready to Die, released in 1994. Um, that's, it's hard not to look at that song. It's like a, a diss track to Pac, especially, I mean, it's really... It wasn't a diss track to Exactly. Pac. He wrote it before Pac got shot. If the Notorious movie taught me anything, he taught me that. But he recorded it and everything before, but it's still yeah. hard not to look at it like a diss track. And I, when I played sports, like... I would listen to that song before, you know, playing football, and it's like, ooh, that shit would get me so hyped. Great song. I could see that. Um, yeah. It's just, uh, you know, talking about separating the weak from the obsolete. It's like, oh, dude, like that, uh, that combination. Good beat on that one. Too. Oh yeah, I mean that is that was lyrical combat right there, and I was ready to go do combat sports. So there's there's my number three. <laughs> Uh, my number three is I love it when you call me Big Pop. Uh, so all of mine are uh, more popular songs, I would say, and that's mostly because I've heard them more. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I've got some honorable mentions that are like going up the charts. But uh, yeah, Big Papa's number three. I just I can't help but think about Hardball. And Hardball's such a great movie. Such a good movie. And I just want to dance. And like, I feel like Keanu Reeves walking into the bar after they win the game. And he wins his bet or whatever. And he starts singing. And everybody's just looking at him like, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, great song. Great. Love Big Papa. Great, great song. All right, you're number two. I was going to say, if you haven't like been at a school dance and heard that song <laughs> and danced to it, then I don't know. I mean, I remember that. No, that see, I went, to a, I went to a Catholic high school. Oh, uh, hell no. No, no biggie at those dances. They're playing we, scripture. We might have got Mace feel so good. Maybe. <laughs> no Nelly. All right, here's my <laughs> number two. It's a song we mentioned earlier. Love this song just because of the format, etc. Ten Crack Commandments. Oh, I good choice, good choice. That's one of my honorable mentions for sure. Dude, I fucking love that song, man. It's not your standard. No chorus. No nothing. And he slings those verses so hard, man. He is just on it. Yeah. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. Um, so funny thing about that, I had um, on the, the website Quora, 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 whatever it is, Q-U-O-R-A. It's uh, basically just a question and answer website. I had a pretty solid like fantasy football following one year because I was doing really well and all my advice was hitting. And so people kept asking me questions, asking me questions, everything like that. And uh, it was like the year my first daughter was born. So I had like a lot of free time to sit there and just type out answers to people's random fantasy football questions. Uh, I don't have time for that anymore, so I don't keep up with it as much. But that, that year, like the next year before the fantasy football draft started, I did my fantasy football, 10 fantasy football commandments. And I tried to base them on the 10 crack commandments. Nice. The problem is fantasy tough. football does not line up with the crack game very well. No. The only one I really kept was uh, don't ever get high on your own supply. There's that. You can't draft too many of your own players. Hey, you got to keep your family. From your favorite team. Your family yeah. and business completely separated. Yep, mm-hmm. that one's good. That one's good. You don't want to play fantasy football with family. It creates rifts. Oh, big time. There's there's some in there. There were probably three or four that I could have worked in, and, and it just went off the rails, and I was like, all right, I'm just going to write ten things down that make sense for fantasy football. And at the same time, dude, that, God, that song is just, uh, I don't know. It's so weird, too, when you think about it. It's it's really just weird. Just from the beat to the lyrics to the, you know, it doesn't, the phrasing. It doesn't flow as well as some of his other things. Like... 
I feel like if somebody else tried to make that song, it would be terrible. But for oh, some yeah. reason, he makes it work. Because it doesn't, like you said, the lyrics don't really flow with the, the music. Mm-mm. But it, it works. So Somehow. I'm cool with it. All right, what's your My number two? number two, which is really 1B. My one and two are 1A and 1B. Like, I can't really decide between them. And it's Hypnotize. Hypnotize. Hypno- hypnotize is such a great song. Mm-hmm. It, it Anytime it comes on, I immediately want to dance. And then it still is, like, just layered in gangster rap at the same time. Like, I don't know how you have a dance song that's also a gangster rap song. But Hypnotize does it perfectly. Does it perfectly. And it's one of those that everybody can get down to. Like, And everybody knows Oh, yeah. Great. Well, I mean, I remember seeing my dad bobbing his head to that shit. And it's like, my dad doesn't bob his head to nothing. <laughs> It, it just doesn't get old. No, I mean... It never gets old. It's funky. I can listen to it like four times in a row and not get tired of it. And Exactly. And it's it's one of those where I find gangster rap music kind of hard to get down and like to dance with. You know what I mean? Yeah, nobody's dancing to Wu-Tang. <laughs> like, it doesn't happen. Well, if they are, they're probably like naked, tweaking on PCP. Yeah, it's, there's, there's something wrong with somebody if they're dancing to Wu-Tang. Like, Let's say that. Out there on the street. Wu-Tang! <laughs> Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Wu Tang Clan ain't to fuck with. All right, what's your number one? Number one, uh, I have two number ones, but okay, I'll call it number one A. If I knew we were doing that, I would have, I would have threw another song in there, but I got honorable mention, so it's good. I'll save my one B for an honorable mention. That's fine. Whatever. Um, number one is suicidal thoughts. Um. That's a that's a way more obscure. That's also from Ready to Die. Um, yeah. That's a that's a way more obscure song. I don't know that I could come up with the like the rhythm or anything to that off the top of my head. Like I've heard it. It's it's it's. I think it's just a haunting, deep ass song. And when I first heard it, it uh, you know, in my head, I'm I'm digesting everything he's saying, and it's like, damn, this dude is is a bad motherfucker like this guy is yeah. not necessarily like he 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 is who he, he is he don't care he loves being who he is and who he is is not who i am so i found it fascinating no. and like really listening to that song is you could feel that vulnerability and the lyrics are just killer and it flows so well and how do you make this song it's, this is called suicidal thoughts that bumps and mm. it's like it, it flows that well I find that incredible yeah not a lot of rappers out there singing about suicide uh, Eminem has some notable songs on the subject but like they, they don't they don't make you want to dance in any way no or like make you want to blow out your car speakers they're like alright I gotta listen to this quiet and then go in my room and think by myself for a little bit true debt. Uh my number one A and this is a this is a half and half um, it's Notorious Thugs featuring Bone Thugs and Harmony slash Spit Show Game from the Biggie Duets album, uh, which was just the remix of this that also featured uh, Twista on it. So like, it's basically the same song, but it's a different song. But uh, the Biggie verse from this is great. Um, the, the Bone Thugs is great. The Twister verse on the remix is great. Like I, the, I don't even know how to put it into words. Uh, you heard it at the beginning of this episode for the intro. It's my one of my all time favorite songs out there. It's just one night. Like you can't turn it off ever. Mm-hmm. It's it. Uh, it's got a lot of brilliance packed into a couple minutes. So I was I was getting the music ready. Like before we got on the call, I was getting the music ready for the episode, and I was like just trying to cut out the part I wanted for the intro and i was like well now i just gotta listen to the whole song and then i tried to go back and cut it again i was like now i gotta listen to the whole song again. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like i couldn't turn it off it's so Dang good it. uh you already <laughs> did your number one right it's suicidal thoughts yes sir what was your other number one my honorable mention mm-hmm. uh well i can't or any honorable mentions that we that don't make the top three but are like that you you just think are good good stuff i, I can't say the first word in the in, or I'm just not willing to say the first word in the title of the song, but the second word is bleed. <laughs> so there's that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Don't say that. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. I'm not. Get- That's one that we're not going to say here. We're not down with that here on this show. Nah. So uh, yeah, that song 
uh another one i'd listen to before i i did wrestling for 10 years too so i'm i'm listening to that and it's like oh yeah they do i ain't scared of no man what is good i'm gonna twist you up like a pretzel and then i did it was really fun all right uh my honorable mentions uh i've already talked about a couple of them juicy which i mean his first single the way they play it in the movie like it's just like all right yeah Again, gangster rapper can make him dance. Mm-hmm. Who knew? Did you ever? Did uh, you ever have subwoofers? I did in college. Um, Tell me you bang that song. Think, I don't know that I did because uh, I, I think I had taken them out by the time I got around to my really biggie face. Dang man, you missed out, guys! If you're listening and you have subs and have not listened to that song, crank that shit up. It slaps like so a, hard. I had a problem with my amp and I had to switch out the amp and then like the one of the wires got messed up and like it, it just never worked right. So I was like, I took them out after like two years and basically flushed money down the drain. But tragedy. All good. Yeah. Uh, One more chance. It's a good one. It is a good one. Give me the loot. Give me the loot. Give me the loot. That is also a great, good one. Great song. Uh, Going back to Cali. I... I hate that song. <laughs> I've never even been to California, and, and I still bump it all the time. Dude, Cali kind of sucks. I'm just going to throw yeah. it out there. You got to wait in line for everything. You got to take a pee. You got to wait 12 minutes. <laughs> all right. I, I can see if you're from there how it could get annoying. I like it, having never been there. Um, I love the dough featuring Jay-Z. Got to let him know. Got to let him know. And then off um, Jay Z's first album, Reasonable Doubt, uh, he had a song featuring Notorious B.I.G. called Brooklyn's Finest, which is better than any of these other honorable mentions that I mentioned, but wasn't technically on one of Notorious B.I.G.'s albums, so I had to put it last. It still counts. Jay Z and Biggie Smalls make you shit your draws. <laughs> I think I did. Oh my God. And on, and on that note, we're going to take a break to hear a promo from another great podcast. Notorious. Do you or someone you know struggle through life with anxiety-related mental disorders? Ever get that feeling that you are one of the few? I'm here to tell you that you are not alone. Take a journey with me as I talk about key points in my past and how they may have led to me being diagnosed with anxiety and panic disorder. After which, we will talk about different ways to tone down the anxiety and maybe even beat it together on anxiety. The easiest way to remember the name is by thinking about how one searches for a state of zen in the midst of the anxieties of life. My name is Gerald, and I'm the host of Anxiety. We're going to talk now about a sad subject. We're going to talk about the death of Notorious B.I.G. We'll start with what we know. Basically, he traveled to L.A., uh, he was going, going back, back to Cali. Uh, February nineteen ninety seven. He was promoting his second album, Life After Death. You didn't like that that joke there? No, I was laughing. At sounded the like joke. A, that sounded like a sarcastic laugh, though. And so he was going there to uh, basically debut Life After Death and to film the music video for everyone's favorite song, Hypnotize. As we just learned, though, it's not anyone's favorite song on this podcast. <laughs> uh, on March fifth, he gave a radio interview with the Doghouse in which he stated he had hired extra security because he feared for his safety. Uh, he cited not only was he was the ongoing East Coast, West Coast hip-hop feud and the murder of Tupac Shakur six months prior, but those were all things that, why he hired that extra security, because he thought there was going to be maybe retaliation for Tupac's death and just the feud overall in general, which, like, why does a rap feud have to kill people? Like it's not real because it's people, man. They kill. It's not real. They kill each other over the dumbest shit in the world. And this is just another people one do. of those things. My city's better than your city. This and that. My style better than yours. Guys, stop being stupid. Stop killing people over dumb things. Seriously. Okay. We lost. We lost two geniuses because of this. Uh. So then, on March 9th, nineteen ninety seven, at twelve thirty a.m. Pacific time. Uh, Christopher Wallace left with his entourage and two Chevy Suburbans to return to his hotel after the Los Angeles Fire Department closed a party early because of overcrowding. This was the party, like the rap party mm-hmm. for Hypnotize. uh, Hypnotize music video. Yeah. Uh, two SUVs were SUVs were trailed by a Chevy Blazer carrying Bad Boy Records director of security. Maybe the security guy should be in 
the Suburbans, though. That's just my kind of not though, too. Yeah. Uh, so his SUV stopped at a red light on the corner of Wilshire and South Fairfax, just 50 yards from the museum where the uh, the party was held. A dark Chevy Impala pulled up alongside a uh, pulled up alongside the SUV. The driver of the Impala, a black male dressed in a blue suit and bow tie, rolled down his window, drew a nine millimeter blue steel pistol, and fired at the Suburban. Four bullets hit Wallace. He's pronounced dead at 1.15 a.m. He was 24 years old. It's terrible. And what sucks is only one of those rounds was fatal. Like, mm-hmm. that's that really sucks. Oh, he's a, he's a big dude. He's a huge. I mean, he could probably take a hit. He, I mean, he took three of them. <laughs> yeah. The fourth one was just a little... I think it got oh, him shit, in the 50 low. 50 Cent took nine. Five. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Fuck 50 Cent. You can't tell me Get Rich or Die Trying isn't one of the greatest rap albums ever. It's one of the greatest rap albums ever. I mean, it's probably top 10. We might have to do a top 10 at some point. Dude, yes. I, I don't know if Get Rich or Die Trying is on there or not, but we'd have to do a full episode to find out. Sounds good. It, and there's been a lot of theories about it. It sucks, man, that we lost some, a, a genius. And it's almost as if he saw it coming. And mm-hmm. well, I mean, I think he did see well, it. Hired coming. the extra security in in the movie. They kind of allude to that. Like he he knew something bad was going to happen. Almost. I think he accepted it too. This is just the yeah. industry I'm in. This is the you know this is the things I have to do to to get what I want. I mean, and I honestly, want what his I want. album was named Life After Death even before he died. So. It, the album hadn't released yet, but it was going to always be called that. And I just so that's I, that's pretty crazy. I find that wild, like his fascination with death, and I almost feel like he, I don't know, man. If you were really that scared to die, wouldn't you try like something a little different? Like, dude's a bajillionaire. Why don't you rent an armored armored vehicle if you're going to this big old party? I know that sounds weird, but there's bulletproof like limos and stuff like that. Yeah, they got that bad boy money. They're fine. Bad boy. They can, they can afford what they need. Uh, so there, like you said, there's several theories um, surrounding what happened, and uh, that, like we said at the top, you know, Biggie and Tupac murders or or deaths are always linked together. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of these theories that we're going to talk about, they they cover how both how the the perpetrator was involved in both, basically. Yep. Uh, so the first was that Sean. Uh, Puff Daddy slash Puffy slash Diddy Combs was involved. Any guy with that many nicknames, like, I'm sorry, you got to move on with your life. Do something new. Seriously, dude. P. Diddy. Pity. Okay. Yeah. Um. So the first one is that he was involved, heavily involved. Um. This was um the the guy behind this idea is a LAPD detective named Greg Kading. He wrote a book in 2011 called Murder Rap: The Untold Story of the Biggie Smalls and Tupac Shakur Murder Investigations by the Detective Who Solved Both Cases. Uh, it's a very humble title by this dude. <laughs> Uh, like he he's not ke- holding anything back here. He'll humble brag. <laughs> yeah, uh, like guys, I got this. Read the book. Um, so that was um, so he he put this theory that it was mostly led by um, by P Diddy. Basically, uh, he paid a member of the Crips or several members of the Crips gang a million dollars to kill Tupac and Suge Knight. Apparently, they only got one of those guys, and then. Uh, Coming back on that, Suge Knight retaliated by hiring one of the Bloods gang members to kill Biggie for only thirteen thousand dollars, and he gave another twenty to uh, to uh, it was Suge Knight's wife, I want to say, or like his girl at the time who who knew. Like the Bloods got ripped off here. Oh yeah, man. So thirty three grand compared to a million, like you know, <laughs> Diddy just threw the mill out there. But I, th- it's he used his gun. Another reason Diddy is kind of a piece of shit. He used his mm-hmm. gang ties, and I, I honestly think Diddy did that just, if we're using this theory, you know, in that context, like, if Diddy did use his gang ties to order a hit on Pac and Shug, like, why is he not dead? Like, come on, yeah. dude. Why, why is Diddy the one that gets to come out of this alive? bastard and i mean there's there's also theories i didn't read a lot about these i, I just covered the main three or four that we're going to talk about mm-hmm. but there's theories out there that that puff daddy hired the person who shot biggie too like biggie was almost getting too mm-hmm. big or he knew that there was going to be this downfall coming and this was kind of a way to preserve him as he was and to basically make even more money for himself that's maniacal 
Yeah. Um, so there's there's some theories on that of how Diddy was more directly involved in getting uh, Big Shot. Uh, the next theory is, uh, and this is probably the most popular, is that Suge Knight and the LAPD were involved. Um, mm. This one is put out there in the world by former LAPD detective Russell Poole. Uh, basically, he's stating that Suge recruited corrupt LAPD authorities to attack Biggie. Um, he's been Suge has been asked about this a couple times, and um, you know he's been asked. And in an ABC News interview, he was asked if he knew who shot Biggie, would he ever tell on them? And his response was, I don't get paid to tell on people. Cold blooded. So some, yeah, something that, that kind of makes this a little sketchier is in August of 2015, um, the, the detective who's behind this theory uh, suffered a heart attack after having a meeting with uh, current LAPD detectives about an unspecified cold case. So, like, he goes in to talk to him about this cold case. As soon as it's over, he has a heart attack and dies. Uh, Buster Rhymes thinks that this meeting was about Notorious B.I.G. and that the, the death of the, the former detective was not a coincidence, basically. Like, he was going in there to give them information and uh, then got killed for it, basically. The detective did. That'd be super fast. Buster Rhymes is on top of things. Buster, I mean, his name's Buster Rhymes. He's busting everything, you know? He's busting these bad yeah, it's guys. it's not just Rhymes, he's busting. He's, he's figuring it out. But I think when you're dealing with, like, Los Angeles, especially in that time period, it was super duper corrupt. Like, it Yeah, it was, wouldn't have been hard to find a, a corrupt no, LAPD cop to help No, you. and I'm sure there was some, some cops that had family they were in. Would you say it was the, he was the, one Suge Knight in the Bloods? thought so i i, I want to say he was in the bloods but i imagine he's got some kind of connection and all it takes is a couple you know talk to a couple people you could pay a crack well, at a thousand think, bucks to go shoot someone in the end you think you know with all this raised security around uh biggie on that weekend some of those people were probably lapd cops that were part of the increased security so it wouldn't like you just kind of have to find those people and corrupt them in some way with money or threats or whatever, and you get them to do their bit. Yeah, knowing Suge Knight is probably bit. threats. That dude's yeah. crazy. It was probably money, and then when they wouldn't take the money, it was money and threats, and then you didn't give them the money and followed through on the threats anyways. Probably. Um, so then third theory we got is the FBI was involved. Um, this one was put out there by author John Potash in his 2008 <laughs> book, uh, The FBI War on Tupac Shakur and Black Leaders. So he cites 12 years of research, interviews, and court documents. Basically, the FBI wanted to put an end to violent rap culture, and the way to do this was by taking out Tupac and Biggie. But not Jay-Z, Nas, Wu-Tang, any of those people. Like, no. They're all good. Yeah, Le you know, Leave those fine. guys alone. They get a pass. Just get these two. Yeah. Um, so basically, they were behind the killings of these two and no other rappers ever, uh, even though rap as a genre continued to be violent for many years it still is so I, I, that, that one's a little shaky to me that one's super shaky and as soon as is it i can't really is it still yeah dude it, violent today i can't really oh, make yeah. out most of the words they're saying takashi six nine or whatever that dude's well, yeah the the people are violent i'll, I'll give you that oh that's, i can't make out what they say either <laughs> i don't know what they're saying in the, in the, uh, yeah. just, uh, but i mean then you hear the old <laughs> i'll shoot him shoot him that's true Fuck your you guys i'm sign me who wants yeah, to that's a good mumble I'll, rap right there. I'll be rich, man. Gucci guy. But we got Twenty One Savage getting deported. Takashi Six Nine in jail. You know, extantation. He passed as well. There's there's some openings out there for there you. There is, man. I'll put it in a good word. Don't hit. You know, don't get me FBI. But I think as soon as I heard FBI, read FBI, saw FBI, it's like bullshit. If anybody I would killed someone, it was the CIA. I mean, if, yeah. if anybody killed those guys, like, in that parameter of we got to take out these top two guys because only that works. To NWA was out there still, yeah. Ice Cube, like, come on. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and who knew Ice Cube was going to be on Law & Order? Like, no one knew That's that. That's Ice-T. Ice-T, oh my god, dude. Ice Cube does the family movies. That's right. Oh Same my, thing. I do that shit all the time. I just saw Ice-T on Twitter earlier. He's hilarious on there. I could see that. He's super funny. Uh, yeah, and like so the my problem with a lot of these big government cover-ups that people claim are out there like 
as soon as you get more than like three people involved, that shit's too hard to keep under wraps. Seriously. It's never going to happen. So if you have this whole organization, the FBI, behind this, somebody would have told by now. Like somebody would have talked about it. You can't keep 50 people quiet. You can keep three people quiet if two of them are dead. That's a famous line said by somebody. I want to say it was Suge Knight, to be honest. Um, So, like, the, the fewer people you have involved in your conspiracy, usually the better. Absolutely. So I could see, like, Suge hiring one person to go kill them and that being it. Or Diddy hiring one person and then Suge retaliating. But, or, like, even, like, if Suge's going to involve LAPD members, it's not... Yo, I need you to kill this guy. It's just be a little lax on your security today. Maybe call in sick to work or something. Not, you know, you pull the trigger. Yeah, it's like pick up that extra shift and look away when, at this mm-hmm. time. And yeah. I mean, shit like that don't, happens. Don't worry about what's going on. Just, you know, you go take your smoke break at 10:15. Yeah, I'll even buy you the coffee. Yeah. That's easier than the whole FBI was in on it. So the last theory and this is the funnest, is that both of them are still alive. Mm. This is the stupidest theory. Nah. But it's fun to think about. I would love it if I they just, were. I I just don't think it's possible in today's world. Unless, the, you know, they got to be on a private island doing absolutely nothing. Can't be caught on camera anywhere. Can't, you know, go to a store, across the road, do anything. Like, they have to be absolutely doing nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't feel like Tupac would be able to keep quiet for... 20 years? Hell no, dude. Dude was a loud mouth. Neither He's talking about everything. him nor Biggie would be able to keep quiet. Yeah. Unless they figured out how to like transport someone's soul slash brain into another body. That You're right, dude. They would not be found yeah. anywhere. That's like Hitler staying alive in Argentina or some yeah. shit. No well, it's, it's way. not only like they would be seen or something like that. Like Tupac was an activist. Like He fought for black rights and things like that. Like He would not stay quiet. Especially in the current climate that we're in. Like, he'd be coming out being like, all right, we need some new raps to, to get people back on track here. I'm trying to... Oh. If Black Panther came out mind. and Tupac didn't go see that, no. If Tupac wasn't in it? Yeah, exactly. Oh, dude, he'd you be You tell me he couldn't play the, uh, the Sterling K. Brown role? What if, uh, you know, the first time we see T'Challa's face, like, the mask comes back, it's Tupac, and that's the first time anyone's seen him in, like, 30 years. It's, oh, my God. That would have been badass. He'd be so tired. <laughs> or if he's like the uh he's the dude from get out whatever his role was in that movie where he's just t'challa's best friend he could be that guy yeah raising those big ass rhinos yes this is what i've been doing all these years i've just been in wakanda raising rhinos this is literally my life this isn't a movie so so that yeah that i think we just solved it tupac and biggie are in uh wakanda we'll be seeing them in adventures endgame uh they need to help us recover from the snap. Yeah. I mean, Biggie is just going to wipe the floor with Thanos in a rap battle to save the universe. I could see that. That. Would, what if? If we can get Peter Quill in a dance-off to with Ronan to end Guardians of the Galaxy, I think we can get a rap battle to end, uh, end game. I think we just nailed something on the head, dude. That'd be awesome. Call us up, Marvel. We got ideas. Uh, it would just suck if these two are still alive and they're not making music. It, I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, uh, mm, that's a toughie, actually. I would love to because get, they would get to the point mm-hmm. where they're out overplayed. I'd love to get some more decent. I would love to see like, I, I'm sure Pac. Well, let's just say they spent the last twenty years writing music, and in 2020 they're going to come out with this bomb ass uh, group album, just the two of them. And and that's all they've been doing for twenty years. Then I could see it. You know, people would be like, "Bullshit!" They, nah, they got some really good people to look just like them on this cover. <laughs> First song is titled "For Real." It's us. <laughs> <laughs> We're in Wakanda. It's real. Come check it, guys. <laughs> all right. So that brings us to our theorizing. What do you think actually happened? Uh, who who do you think was behind it? We I I think we both agree that they're not still alive. So I think Suge Knight was behind. I think he was the catalyst that got the ball rolling. Yeah, um, I agree, one hundred percent. I think Suge Knight put something through the grapevine, and did he hurt it? So you know something like oh you know he's he's gunning for for Biggie, you know Suge Knight's about to take you out, blah blah blah. So instead of going for Biggie first, 
I think Suge Knight pissed Diddy off, fucked with his manhood, because once Diddy gets, you know, he's a vindictive bastard. Um, So he retaliated, killed Pac, and then, you know, Suge had all the all the reason to. It's like, oh, you mm. killed you killed this dude first. Okay, now I gotta kill Biggie. Now now you gotta die. Sorry, yeah. I I I wouldn't rule out Diddy for having a hand in Tupac's murder, like you said. Um, I I don't think he had anything directly to do with uh, Biggie's murder. I like you said. I think it's Suge. There's just too many things that point to Suge as just being an absolute awful person. Yeah, he's a sociopath. Uh, He's he's tangled up in several murder cases. No one's out there going like, yeah, you know what? Suge's really a good dude. He would never do something like that. Uh, is anytime anything comes like this on Suge, everyone's just like, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, that sounds right. Suge, yeah. <laughs> I buy that. You don't hear him so, uh, like, converting to Christianity in prison. Like most of the time when they go, it's like, but they're born again, not Suge Knight. Yeah. No, and and like anytime like somebody in the public light is tied up in something like this, you always get defender. Like even somebody like Chris Brown, who's a total piece of shit. Every time he, you know, hits a woman, everybody's like, yeah, but his music's good or he does this. Nobody does that for Shook Knight. Yeah. Everybody's just like, yeah, he probably killed that dude. Oh, I'm sure he killed that dude. I'm willing to put five on it. I got five on it. Five. Yeah, I don't think we're ever going to find out for sure. Shook's not the type of dude that's going to do a deathbed confession or confess to a cellmate, anything like that. Like, he's taking that with him to the grave if it was him. If it wasn't him, I feel like it would already be out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't think we're ever going to know for sure. All right. This is what happened. This is who did it. This is why they did it. It's just going to be one of those things that's never fully tied up, but we're all just going to go with the assumption that it was shook for the most part. Right. It's open-ended, but sometimes those are the funnest stories. That's all we've got for Notorious B.I.G. Uh, I'm sorry if you're a Tupac fan over B.I.G., but hopefully we just converted you because we outlined very easily how Notorious B.I.G. is better. Uh, if you don't agree now, that's on you. Go listen to Notorious B.I.G. You might you might catch up. Might learn something. So get out yeah. there, listen to it, buy it legally. some great songs to go listen to. Yeah, I don't really care if you buy it legally or not. Support your artist. Uh, okay. I don't either. I won't look, guys. Don't care. I, uh, yeah, do, do, do what you need to do to get the job done. That's right. You can follow us on Twitter at APA something if you want to chat with us or tell us, you know, why you think Tupac may be better. You're wrong, but you can try and tell us. Uh, you can send us emails at a podcast about something at gmail.com and you can support our Patreon at patreon.com slash a podcast about something. Get on there, guys. Check us out. We're active on Twitter. So if you get, you know, Very if active. you shout out to us, we will shout back. Um, we, I had a blast today talking with people and, uh, you know, kind of reading their thoughts on our upcoming subject that we've discussed tonight. So that was, that was fun. Keep it up. Yeah. Guys. We'll usually try and do a, a, start a conversation before we record. So we have a little more to talk about, engage with listeners slash followers. So check us out there. Um, always rate and review on iTunes. If you're listening on iTunes or whatever you're listening off, they have some sort of rating system. You would obviously give us the most amount of ratings that you can possibly give. Uh, because we're the best. Please and thank you. Basically. Helps us a bunch. And you guys stay sassy. Stay classy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh.